Okay, so today I'm going to be recreating one of the illustrations that I made for the story Croc and Bird. Um, this is the moment when Bird has built a nest for the first time. Well, he thinks it's a nest. It's really just a few twigs stacked one on top of each other. Now, um, a lot of people often ask me when I'm drawing an illustration, where is it that you start? Um, and there have been all sorts of answers to that over the years because I've been drawing since I was about three years old, so it's been a while. Um, but nowadays, through experience, what I've learned to do is start with the bit that's the hardest to draw. Because um, if that goes wrong, as it often does, then that's the only bit that you've lost when you have to start again. Um, if you save it till last, then you can lose an awful lot of time. So um, before starting today, I've just drawn the little image of Bird sitting on his three twigs here. Um, that's the hardest bit because Bird's little smile here and his kind of victorious stance, they're quite hard to capture. They often go a bit wrong. But today it was no problem. I did it first time. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to the rest of the illustration. Um, and let's draw a crocodile. A uh, crocodile is a little bit easier than Bird. Um, not all the time, but this time, because all he has to do really is just be looking at Bird. When I first started on this book, I didn't really have a clue what crocodiles looked like. So I went to the zoo a lot um, to try and work out how crocodiles fit together. Um, I didn't really want to make something that looked exactly like a real crocodile, but I wanted to make sure that the things I was choosing were related to what crocodiles really look like. And I got really interested in um, like the little things like how many bumps they had on the back of their head. And if you look at a crocodile, they have kind of this really curvy mouth. Um, so I learned the number of curves that crocodiles have in their mouths. And then when it comes to redrawing them, it just makes it look that little bit more like a crocodile. Now there are these moments that you come to in a drawing where you can choose what you do either way. Um, crocodiles have lots of teeth, we all know that. But sometimes in the story I want you to see crocodiles' teeth, and sometimes I don't. Let's say when he's saying to Bird that I'm hungry, it's kind of important that we see he has lots of teeth. Right now I don't think it's so important, so I'm going to leave his teeth out. Yeah, when you're looking at crocodiles um, in the zoo, there are all sorts of things you can notice, like you can count the number of toes they have, or um, they have lots of kind of lumps and bumps on their back as well. I think I mentioned those already. If you want, you can count how many there were, so you were exactly right. But um, when I'm making an illustration like this, I'm not too bothered about exactly getting it spot on. I just want you to have the feeling that this is a crocodile. So I went so far as noticing that his back was bumpy without counting out exactly how many there were. Um, now you'll notice that when I'm uh, drawing this illustration, I'm using a brush, <coughs> not a pencil, uh, and I'm using ink. I'm using this um, little bottle of acrylic ink here. Um, that's because later on I'm going to put a bit of colour on this illustration and um, the acrylic ink is going to show up much better than pencil wood, which will kind of get lost when the colour goes on. Acrylic ink is nice and bold, um, so you can see it when the colour is on top. Uh, it also, it, because acrylic is a kind of plastic, um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't run when you put the water on too. Sometimes you'll find that if you're drawing with pencil, um, everything kind of runs everywhere and makes a big mess afterwards. Right, so let's just give Crocodile his tail. Swoosh. There we go, that's Crocodile pretty much done. Now I'm going to switch brushes because um, you see this brush has quite a fine skinny point. That's good when you want to do detail like uh, on Crocodile's eye here or his mouth or his front leg. But sometimes you don't want to do detail, you just want to make a big blobby mess. Um, so I'm switching to a brush which is a little bit fatter. And you see also it doesn't have a pointy end. That means when I draw, it will make more than one line at the same time. I'm going to use that one for drawing the shadow underneath Crocodile here. Because I don't want there to be just one line, I'd like it to be an area of grey. And I'm going to use the same brush, the same big fat brush, to start putting some stuff in the foreground of the picture as well. I'm going to put some rocks in here. There's one. 
There's another. Um, and the reason I'm using the fat brush and not the skinny one is because when you're looking at this picture, I don't really want you to look at the rocks. I want you to look at bird and at crocodile and at the nest. So the rocks, I'd quite like to be there because I'd like you to know the kind of place that crocodile and bird are sitting, but I don't want you to spend too much time looking at them. So I draw them quite quickly and this fat brush helps for that. I'm going to do something similar with um, the beach that they're sitting on. Let's do the line of the beach here. Ooh. And there, that's coming behind the nest. And now we'll do some plants here as well. And I don't really care that they look particularly like plants, just as long as you get the vague idea that there might be something growing there. So I don't really have time to paint everything the colours that it would actually be. I've got to make some choices and leave some stuff out. I'm probably only going to use two colours, I think, today. Maybe three. Uh, so the first one I'm going to use is yellow, because I like yellow. It cheers me up. And I'm just going to use that yellow colour to um, fill in the shape of the forest and the beach and the stones and bird and crocodile. I'll work from the top to the bottom because um, I work on a, a drawing board that's on a slight slope. So when I'm using wet paint, gravity pulls it all towards the bottom of the picture. So if I work at the top, then the wettest part of the paint is always at the bottom, and that means I don't get any blobs. Let's just finish this off here. There we go. And you can see instantly that now it's a little bit clearer to see where that forest is and where crocodile and bird are as well. Um, now I'm going to change colour a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of red into that yellow. Okay, so that's dried off now. So I'm going to put the second coat on. And you remember I said I'm going to paint it a little bit more uh, orange, kind of pinky. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to pull this section forward with the crocodile and the bird and the rocks and the beach, but it's going to leave that forest section behind. So there we go. You can maybe start to see that this whole section, this whole foreground bit where crocodile and bird are sitting, is starting to come forward of the other section because of that nice darker colour. Um, and I expect some of you have got the question in your heads, but crocodiles aren't red and birds aren't red. Well, maybe this baby bird is. He turns blue later in life. But the beach isn't red, the plant isn't red. That doesn't really matter at this stage. This is all about just laying a groundwork. And if I had lots of time, I could paint lots and lots of different colours on top later on. Uh, but for now, like I said, we're just going to use two or three. So here we've got our second stage of the illustration. And if I take a little step back, um, I'm quite pleased with how it's working out. I can really see that this foreground section is popping forward. It's giving it that kind of 3D feel, like it's got different layers of depth. Um, now, once that has dried, I can go in and pick out our characters and draw attention to the specific things that I'd like us to look at. Okay, now the important bit, the two main characters. Bird is actually already kind of the colour that I would like Bird to be. Um, so I'm pretty much going to leave him alone, I think. I might come back in and put a little bit of pink on top of him, but let's see what happens when we start painting his nest. Um, because it might be that when he's sitting on some brown logs, he starts to look like he's a different colour, even though he's exactly the same colour as the background. Let's see. All right, I'll just test that that's going to be okay. Oh, I've just spotted something. Um, you can't really leave blobs of wet paint on the bottom. Uh, as they dry out, they kind of do this weird thing where they run back into the paint you've already put down and make a blobby shape. So I have to fix them where I see them. Uh, okay, here goes. I've mixed my brown. So let's start painting. I called them logs, didn't I? That's a bit, that's a bit grand for what they are. They're really just twigs. Okay, here's our first twig. Uh, make sure not to go over Bird's little feet. I'm sure he'll thank me for that. There we go. Yes, that might work. I think I might 
need to put a little bit of pink into bird. But let's finish off his nest anyway. There's the second twig. And the third twig, it's mostly black already, so we don't need to do too much, but let's just put a bit of brown on there anyway. Okay, now crocodile. Now crocodiles are kind of greeny brown, aren't they? So let's mix some greeny brown for croc. It's a bit like I said at the start, crocodile is much easier than bird. He, uh, he doesn't need too much thought, so we just give him his green brown color. There we go, a bit darker than that perhaps. Also a bit like birds, uh, I think crocodiles, they kind of get lighter underneath, don't they? So I'm gonna paint on top and then I'll just wet the brush again and I'll see if I can pick up some of that paint for the underside of his body. Wipe it on your trousers, that's totally allowed. There, I think we're pretty much done. Just a little bit more on crocodile's legs and then I'm gonna say I'm finished. Oh, I should do that plant as well, shouldn't I? I did say I was gonna paint it green. Right. There, I think we'll call that our finished illustration. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers, everyone. Bye -bye.